All right, welcome back to the uh, Pitch Podcast. My name is Eric Wilbanaugh, the president of the Baseball Blue Book. And uh, today we are excited to have the founder of ProXR with us, Grady Phelan, uh, up out of, out of St. Louis, Missouri, my neck of the woods. Excited to have him on. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Happy to be here, Eric. Thanks for having me on board. Well, I appreciate you being back on. I, I met uh, Grady at the, at the ABCA conference this year uh, down in Dallas and uh, really enjoyed my conversation. So I certainly wanted to get him on the program and really specifically on the pitch. Um, and as you guys know, each episode features industry leaders, innovators, trailblazers, all making a difference in the world of baseball and beyond. Our mission here at the, at the pitch is to really highlight innovative ideas, share success stories, and explore the challenges and opportunities facing entrepreneurs in the baseball industry. And we are certainly hitting that with Grady and ProX are very innovative. Some of the great success stories, um, obviously challenges and opportunities in this world. Um, and I, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited just to get this thing going. Grady, I'm going to hand it over to you and really let you give us your pitch. ProXR is a grip technology company founded in biomechanics and ergonomics. It was actually based on a, an observation that occurred in my backyard, an accidentally thrown baseball bat that nearly hit my son in the head. And this was 20 years ago in our backyard. Now, at the time that that happened, when I threw that bat, I, it was a teeny little aluminum bat, and it left a massive mark in the palm of my hand, and it kind of hurt. And we had been we had been fungoing hickory nuts out of the backyard for quite a while, and I'm plenty strong enough not to throw uh, a little aluminum baseball bat that nearly killed my son. So uh, it occurred to me that um, there's got to be a better way. Something caused me to throw that bat. And basically, it was um, what I discovered was that it was knob compression. So a typical bat knob looks like this. Like when you swing a, this is actually this is kind of cool. This is an old H and B bat. Nice. So this, and they haven't. This bat has not changed. This bat knob is still the same across ninety percent of Major League Baseball. Guys are swinging this. That knob causes compression in this part of the hand. That's where the ulnar nerve is. That's where the hamate bone is underneath there. But when you compress that ulnar nerve, it caused me to release my grip on the bat. That started me down an entire path of discovery in terms of understanding the dynamics that occur within the grip of an athlete when they swing a bat. And it turns out a hockey stick, lacrosse stick, field hockey, and golf. So not only, and then also you can see pickleball behind us. So... What I actually discovered wasn't just a baseball concept, but really a new interpretation of grip technology for sports. That's great. Um, I'm really excited about getting into this a little bit um, from the technology as well as the business side. Um, I was reading through the your profile about you. Um, pretty interesting. Uh, being that, that started 2006, you got uh, certified with the MLB. Uh, 2010 was the very first person that used the bat, Mike Hessman, and his bat yes. was accepted into the uh, National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. That's pretty cool. Talk about That's that correct. a bit, and then we'll get into the business. Yeah, sure. So in 2006, um, I had finally gotten my all my patents and IP settled, and it was filed so that I could then show it. Prior to that, uh, everything I'd developed in the three years prior to 2006 was development, development, trial and error, learning the rules, et cetera, understanding the whole IP landscape. <clears throat> then I realized, well, I got to get approval from MLB. And so at the time, the VP of operations was Roy Krasick. And Roy uh, was very generous to take my calls because I was essentially, I'm a no, I'm an, I was at the time a nobody. I didn't represent anything other than a guy with an idea from St. Louis. And um, so we had a series of conversations um, finally asked me to send him a bat. I had actually been invited down to spring training with the Cardinals through a very close friend of mine who's a um, hand therapist, um, surgery expert at Washington University School of Medicine. Long story short is I sent, um, had some, by the way, had some interesting response from the Cardinals at the time. Went to, uh, sent the bat, sample bat to Roy at Major League Baseball, and he said, we're not going to approve this. It's not a smooth round stick. I said, Roy, you need to put that bat on your table and roll it because when you do, it's round like a regular bat knob. All I did was angle, 
angle the, the knobs so that it's still within that cylinder of a round bat. Well, when you roll a ProXR bat, any of our ProXR bats on a table on a flat surface, it rolls like a regular, uh, regular bat. So then he said, it's approved. And that was in 06. And, um, you know, interestingly, it took me quite a while to get players to try it from then on. I also went to um, a, a number of uh, sporting goods companies. I won't name them because some of them are actually going to license our technology now, but uh, I don't want to alienate anyone. But I went to a couple of big bat companies and got a number of uh, responses along the lines of, yeah, we've already tried that. No one's ever going to use that. It's not. You'll never get it approved by Major League Baseball, et cetera. Well, thank you for the to-do list because I went out and did all that stuff. Um, I do want to point out that that whole thing about um, Mike Hessman's bats going to the Hall of Fame put me as a lifetime donor and member of the Hall of Fame. So look at that. I carry, That's great. That's I carry great. that under my wallet. Um, oh, along with my uh, ABCA membership card, which is – a decade under my belt. <laughs> um, so, you know, from that point, it was really a matter of trying to, because I had now had approval from Major League Baseball. I had a patent pending. And in 2010, 2011, that patent finally was granted. At that point, I was able to go out and license our technology to bat companies. And the first company I did that with was a company called Rock Bats. And that was very short-lived. They didn't last long in Major League Baseball. But then the good guys at Old Hickory, um, shout out to Chad Lamberth and shout out to uh, Travis Copley at uh, Old Hickory. They embraced the opportunity to bring ProXR in as, a, as an option on their bats. And and uh, they were, so they were our first licensee. Um, and then the rest is just a matter of head down, putting bats in players' hands, doing more and more research and development because the original knob that looks like this is now one of 15 probably different designs, different knobs that we have with ProXR. So it's not just a one size fits all. What we, what I realized in the development process was that, you know, players have different hands, different swings. They deliver their hands in a different way. And there's so much um, qualitative aspect to a player's engagement and grip on a bat versus the the um, quantitative data, which is how does what is their exit velo, what is all that. So really trying to navigate that without trying to coach players on how to hit, but you're changing something as intimate as their grip uh, was a huge hurdle. Plus, when <laughs> when I put something like this in front of hitting coaches at Major League Baseball, and the the players are like. What the hell is that? Why yeah. would you do that to a bat? So it took a lot of explaining. So you, so, so talk. You know, people are listening to this, going, "Okay, Pro XR. You know, it's it, it's a technology. It's a bat handle. It's it's a an angle. What is your business model? Because I can't come to Pro XR and just buy a bat. Is that correct? Or is That's correct? Okay. So we're in a unique position. I developed a technology got it patented, and also mean we had protection. I have ownership of that concept, that asymmetric knob concept for baseball bats. And then I got MLB approval. So now the only path to get that is through me. Well, I did make a series of bats, of, of ProXR bats, and I actually have one. This is a, actually a replica of what went to the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. This is a maple. And so I tried getting into the bat business. And it's a really difficult business. It's heavy equipment required. It's a lot of investment in billets. It's finishing a lot of stuff. And it became clear to me that that wasn't my area of expertise. My area of expertise is in innovation and development of that innovation. So I found a better path, and that was to create a licensing program that allows any bat company who wants to, to license our technology and have access to all of our designs and put them on their bats. And so since then, we've got seven current MLB bat companies uh, licensing our technology. And you'll see it throughout baseball on a number of different bat company bats. That's really an interesting model. I, I really, I, I, you know, from a technology perspective, you, that happens quite a bit, right? It's, it's code or, or some type of feature 
that a lot of software companies will develop, um, but they don't certainly want to be the end res- the end product. Um, they license right. their 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 software, um, uh, white label it, and then it, it goes into a different another platform, really similar to what you guys are are doing. So Pro XR is really a white label technology that a company could come in, they can license this, and then they can create. Um, is there different rules or regulations from that perspective? Do they have to have all kind of Pro XR type designs, or it, can it just be an option for them? They have access. So once they sign a licensing agreement with Pro XR, they can use utilize any of our designs. As a matter of fact, uh, in some instances, we have worked with uh, one or two back companies where they have players who have who love. Uh, let's say they like our Epic. This is the Epic design. So they love, again, round and cross-section, epic. So they love the feel of that, but they'd like to change some angles on it. We have a lot of flexibility with our IP to make some adjustments to accommodate those players. And when we do that with a specific back company, we then allow that back company to have purview over that particular design that we built for their player. Now, if another back company wants to do the same thing, we work with them and develop those CAD files so that they can then implement those onto their their bats. That's great. And and you just talked about working with them. So what does it look like from a business perspective? Are you you're partnering with these bat manufacturers? Are there anything that you're looking for from a bat um, manufacturer that, um, let's say, is, is the, the size that they are, their reach, um, their market? Uh, are those any things that you kind of determine or, or, th- or are you really open to anybody that is interested in licensing your IP? That's a great question. And actually it was one that we intentionally chose the following path. Baseball players have relationships with bat companies that are personal. They've known these guys for years. Mike Trout has known the guys at Old Hickory since the day he started swinging wood bats. Pete Alonzo's had a lifetime re- relationship with dovetail bats. And so it is not if they want to try our technology, we want us, we want ProXR to be available on any brand of bat, large or small. So it I I don't dictate pricing, I just provide technology. And think of it as in this way. You brought up technology as a greater platform and white labeling, but think about ProXR as the Intel inside, right? Right. So so you know you, they put this little sticker on PCs that say, oh, there's an Intel chip in this thing. Well, ProXR is on these bats. And again, we didn't talk about it yet, but there's this huge performance advantage to using ProXR over a conventional knob. And so the war- so letting players swing ProXR on the bat of their choice has created a great network of grassroots networking for us that have has really spread throughout we've not done a whole lot of big time marketing everything we've generated is through word of mouth from players sharing bats you really bring up a good point you know i've talked to a number of of custom bat manufacturers the wood bat manufacturers and and it is you're absolutely right it's certainly um personal relationships right they build that relationship with them young excuse me, and then they continue to go with them with, with their career, but having the ability to try a new technology on the bat that they like and they feel comfortable with. Uh, really the question here, and, and I think I already know the answer because you've already said it a couple of times, but the biggest challenge, um, why isn't everybody doing this? What, what are you running into? Um, what is the, the, the real concern or the objections that people have, have typically come up with when you, when you bring this sure. up to them? Yeah, so so there's there's actually two there's so this is a double edged sword in a way. Actually, there's two sides of this concept. Um, one, if you look at hit baseball as a as a vertical, as a huge society, for, you know, as baseball is baseball, right? It's right. it's an American the American sport. It's really beholden to history and tradition, and. You know, a baseball player will tell you, and coaches will tell you, this is a baseball bat. This is what a baseball bat looks like. Now, if I come to someone and say, no, yeah, this is a baseball bat, but it also looks like this, they there's a lot of resistance just on the fact that it's so different. And it requires players to get used to something different and new. Um, so that's that's on the baseball side of things. On the manufacturing side of things, um, it requires that um, it requires that they have some special technology to actually turn these bats. You can't right. you can't turn this bat a ProXR knob on a conventional lathe 
that would turn this asymmetric this symmetric bat with an asymmetric knob. So, um, so it's up to the bat companies if they're going to get into our technology. They either have to find a resource outside, or they have the equipment already internally, or they buy the equipment to be able to make it. And so those are the two dynamics that are going. But then there's the performance aspect of it. Players are always seeking to try something new to help them get to the next level. And I know that one of the questions coming up is, so who's your market? And really our market are baseball players seeking to play at the next level. And so when I was, when I go to club clubs now, I was in the last two weeks of February, we were in spring training with 13 different teams you know, we'll have the bats laying out and pro players will walk by. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. How's, tell me about Prox are. But you, they're not grabbing it. They're sticking with their brand, what they got them there. The minor leaguers, you almost have to give away a line ticket for these guys to try it because they want to try something new. And the data that we have based on ZEP sensors, blast motion sensors, rap soto, um, hit tracks, all that stuff shows typically you're looking at a three to an eight mile an hour increase in exit velo because we're optimizing that grip technology, all that biomechanic stuff. I think I've gotten a little off track from your original question, yeah. but no, the, uh, no, those that, were the, that, that was really good, Grady, because because uh, I was thinking the same thing, right? You've got the traditionalists, which is typically ones that have made it. And you you pointed that out yeah. that they they came up with this. Why I'm not changing anything, right? I, I'm <laughs> I've made the roster. Um, thanks, but no thanks. It's really those minor leagues, and then down down the line, right? When wood bats really start in you know being introduced to players, which is typically that teenage years, uh, when now you can yeah. join a wood bat tournament, you can wood bat leagues, um, and it really is they don't know what they don't know, right? So getting it into their hands early, um, all of a sudden it feels better. I think that's something that isn't even talked about, right? It feels, I, I felt the grip doubt ABCA and and that was always an issue with me is, is really it hitting those right. nerves and it not feeling real well, but you just kind of get used to it. So it eliminates mm-hmm. a lot of those things. Um, so, so really the, the market looking younger, moving up, which is funny because you talk to bat manufacturers, the wood ones, they're trying to go to the high end and then utilize some great, you know, ambassadors or influencers to kind of push it down. But you're, you're absolutely right. right. From a technology perspective, it's perfect to hit them younger because they don't know and teaching them something um, that they, that they haven't really learned yet. Right. And so, we actually have addressed that we have a new product called the switch and it's for baseball and softball. And basically this is what the switch for baseball looks like. And this is, we have switch for softball as well. It's a, it's a piece that, and by the way, we just got, we, both of these are NCAA approved for both men's baseball and women's softball. And so what that does is you take off a conventional knob taper and then we can get, we can put pro XR, onto that bat so that now I get the, I get the same performance advantage with metal that I get with wood when I have that asymmetric knob on there. So that's that's what it looks like on, a, on an old Easton. But this is a brand new Ghost with the Pro XR switch knob on it. There you go. Um, so we've we've come full circle. We started with you know my son throwing a bat that I ne- you know I ne- nearly hit my son as a little kid. We went to the top of the pinnacle of everything and got Major League Baseball approval, and that's like a giant pyramid. The rest of baseball and softball is here, but we've got the top elite level players like Pete Alonso has won the home run derby with Pro XR. So we've got the best hitters in the game using Pro XR. John Carlos Stanton last year hit the third longest tape measure home run at Yankee Stadium ever with Pro XR on his bat. So now those kids are seeing that. So we've got NCAA players all over the country putting this on their bats. That's great. And that's really the only alternative that, that, that they have on the aluminum bats, correct, is, is really your, your, your um, device there. That, and what is that called? What, what was that again? This is, called, this is called the Switch. The Switch, okay. It's available at our website, proxr.com, at our store. Um, you know, we, we actually, these are, you know, it's really cool. We decided again. You were told we wanted to talk about business more so. So, 
<laughs> one of the things one of the things we look at is how do we optimize a our manufacturing processes, but how do we get to the market quicker and more efficiently? So we actually instead we bypass the concept of doing um, injection molding and all that. Every one of these is 3D printed with a custom polymer with a local resource here in town in St. Louis called Printerior. And they manufacture, they 3D print these for us on demand. So again, this stuff is like some of the strongest material you could ever possibly want on a bat. This stuff is nearly bulletproof. Um, so in terms of you know the business side of what we do, we're selling these direct. We're licensing this stuff to the, the big boys. And in between... You know, we're also developing other stuff, you know, extending that concept of grip technology to golf, cricket, field hockey, uh, lacrosse. So, and so, so as, as the founder and really the, 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 you're really the, the, uh, the engineer, the technology side of this. Talk about yeah. the business then. You you did the segue to business and and I always laugh. I say, "Hey, I want to I don't want to talk about baseball. We're going to talk about business." And it always goes back to baseball and that and that's okay. Uh, that's why we do it and that's why we love it. But to talk about kind of the organization structure. This is a little bit different like you said. You're 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 basically licensing the IP to people um, and and I think what what's great about that is is so many bat manufacturers need to take a look at uh, what Grady is doing with Pro XR. Uh, if you haven't already ready. Uh, make sure that you get his information on the Baseball Blue Book app uh, under the vendors of ProXR. All of this contact information is there. But then you also have direct to direct to sales. Um, are you, do you have sales team? Do you have, do, do you have, um, um, do you have account management? Um, are you kind of running the show? Talk about the business and how it grows. How do you support it? And how do you scale with, with continuing to bring in the, the, the ROI that can keep you successful? Sure. So um, up until 2020, first 15 years of this, I bootstrapped the whole thing myself and brought in a couple of early stage investors. In 2020, we brought in a new investment group and I have two primary investors now. Um, they have essentially continued to fund the development of IP. IP is, ex is our lifeblood and it's extremely expensive to pursue yeah. uh, IP. We have probably seven or eight different um, approved patents and we have more in the pipeline, as well as trademarks, registrations internationally, et cetera. So um, the company is very lean in that regard. And so given the internet, and given that you know some companies uh, want to purchase this and sell this on their website, we just signed up our first um, our first online retailer um, recently. Um, they are Team Express and Softball.com, and so um, the idea is to keep operations extremely lean so that we can roll as much of our profits back into ongoing development, building relationships and allowing me to be the subject matter expert to our part, our value added partners who are bat makers and sporting goods companies. So um, I have one general manager, Becky Miner. Becky, shout out, you're killing it out there for me. Keep going, kid. And uh, she's, by the way, a huge baseball fan, um, huge Cardinals fan, so given our hometown. Um, so, we run a very lean organization. Um, I, I also need to point out that none of this would have been possible without my wife, Jill, who is, um, you know, had infinite patience and has covered healthcare for us for the last 20 years, which is great. I'm really lucky and blessed to have her on board. So uh, I know that that can sound a little bit cheesy and trite, but it's the absolute truth. It's, um, it's absolutely the truth with all entrepreneurs. They've got somebody that's that's uh, supporting the dream uh, while we, we, we continue to build it, right? <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's funny you should say that. Her favorite saying that she says to me typically every day over coffee is teamwork makes the dream work. And, <laughs> and, so, and so without that, you know, I'd, I'd be probably doing product development elsewhere for American Express, wherever I've done in the past. So who yeah. knows? But um, so back to the business. Um, so our it also, so our process of we have, we get IP, we develop it. I develop new ideas, new innovation, and then we get that approved and then get it patented. And then we go out and again, build relationships with companies uh, to take that on. So right now we're currently in the, we've got approval on all of our IP for golf grips. And so rather, and that's the other part of this business that's so important is 
you can't hang your hat on one concept. Right. As a business owner and as a development person, you have to continue be willing to pivot and realize that this might not be the best idea we've had. So this is the original ProXR knob, which a lot of guys in Major League Baseball are still swinging this. Tyler O'Neill with the Boston Red Sox has this knob on his bat. But then we've got this one, which a lot of guys have, which is the this is the epic. And then this is a slightly more elegant version of this one. This is called the icon. And it really what we've what I've forced what I force myself to do is look beyond what we've already achieved and continue to look at and test and get feedback from players. Um, so continual feedback, continual improvement of all of our products is so important. Our very first ones of these were a disaster in terms of fit and finish. Um, you know, and material choices and all, you have to continually be evolving your business and moving forward. Um, there's also the other part of this, which is ongoing R&D. So uh, I continue to explore technologies that help us uncover deeper layers of understanding of ProXR. We started using compression sensor technology at Washington University School of Medicine that showed, that revealed that the ProXR knob reduces the compression force to this part of your hand specifically by 25%, wow. so, which was phenomenal. That's wow. so hand surgeons tell us that's enough to prevent a broken hamate bone. Had Mike Trout been swinging ProXR, he would not have broken his hamate bone. John Carlos Stanton would not have broken his hand hamate bone. Um, I mean, the list goes on. Somewhere on my website, I've got a list of all the guys who have broken their hamate bones. It's well over a hundred in Major League Baseball. That's, wow. Easily, well, that's crazy. Um, so then, you know, now I'm using newer technologies, not only Rapsodo, to track the, the positive. Uh, because we get rid of that speed bump effect, we now are looking at what is the performance benefit. Well, the performance benefit is that three to eight miles an hour increase in exit velo. But we're continuing to look at the dynamics of what occur in the hand during motion. And there's technology that we're using that are multi-axis sensors that allow me to see what the hand's doing through and at contact that again is allowing us to continue to optimize the ProXR's design. Um, so um, I, I've really wandered off course here, but in terms of that's, that's the core philosophy for ProXR as a business model. No, that's, that, that's really good because, you know, a couple of things that just from a business perspective is the ability to continue to innovate, not the ability to, but the desire and the, the need to continue to, to, to um, innovate even though you've figured something out, right? Just because you've got an yeah. idea that now has starting to really catch catch on, it's the continuation. I also one of the things that you said was preventive preventative measures are are typically more difficult to sell than performance enhancements, right? And so absolutely. It, Right. You're, you, you started with preventing some of these things, but people go, ah, I'm, it's not going to hurt me. Right. It's not going to happen to me versus right. I can do it. See a three to eight percent increase in my exit velo or whatever it is. Now you have people's, you know, their their eyes. So it's a marketing message. Right. It's now from a business perspective, right. it's 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 changing that marketing message. It's the same product. It's doing the same thing, but it's how we speak to the people that we're selling to. There's a unique perspective in that one. You don't sell the drill and the drill bit. You sell a hole. I need a hole. I don't need a drill and a drill bit. So, so what's the hole that we're selling that we're filling? Right. I need performance. Exactly. I need. And so, what's interesting, we under again, this is also wrapped around back to baseball, understanding the baseball environment and knowing that there's it's a very small community, and so that word of mouth is key. And so being able to say, hey, to a player, I'm going to help you with, uh, with your performance, better plate coverage, better exit velo, better barrel control, better barrels, et cetera. To a coach or a GM, there's a different message. The hole they have is I want to keep my players healthy and on the field. Right. So, so now, hey, coach, hey, general manager, I'm going to help your players hit better, perform better, get on base be more effective offensively, and I'm also going to keep them on the field because they're not going to break their hammock bone in most cases. So craft how we've crafted our message changes 
as we deal with different segments of the baseball bat. As of the it's baseball called bat. personas, right? You create the persona who you're targeting, and then you yeah. build around those personas. And so, yes, we're getting, we're actually talking business. This is good. So we're blending baseball yeah. and business. So great, Grady really, uh, but I'll tell you what, I love talking to Grady. He, he, he absolutely understands not only the technology, but, but really the, the, the business side of, of getting this out. And there's so many components to it. Um, you know, for more information, you can find Grady at uh, proxr.com. We have all of his information in the Baseball Blue Book app uh, in the vendor section. Um, also, I believe Grady does have a profile in there. And so um, being able to contact him directly. I guess the last question, uh, Grady, is we, uh, before we wrap up is, in your in your opinion, what is what some of, are some of the emerging trends and opportunities that you're seeing specifically in the baseball industry? You've talked about other sports, but what are you seeing kind of in baseball um, that is going to open up additional opportunities for you? I am so glad you asked this question because um, I, like I said, I spent the last, I, the last two weeks of February at spring training with 13, 14 different clubs. And there's a, um, and I talked about this earlier, actually, there's the aspect of the qualitative uh, for a baseball player. How does the bat feel in my hands? And then there's the quantitative. How does the baseball bat perform in the player's hands? And uh, I can't mention the teams, but I've worked last year. We worked we had a, a small project that we worked with a, uh, an MLB team about have, helping them pick the right bats for their players. And after discussions from the past, the last two weeks in February, it's been it's even more apparent to me now that there's this chasm that they're trying to, to close. They're trying to find the keystone that connects players qualitative and the players quantitative in respect to the baseball bat. How do we, how do we get a bat that's co biomechanically correct for one particular player's swing, the way they swing it, the way they grip it, how their kinematic sequence works through delivery of the barrel to the ball. And I think that uh, ProXR certainly plays a part in that because, and we've already started these process, but finding that keystone moment, identifying the player's biomechanics and understanding how they swing a bat and what's driving them. Every player is different. My build is different than yours versus Pete Alonzo versus, you know, Stubby Clap of, you know, the first base coach of the Cardinals. We all deliver a barrel differently. So there's got to be a bat that's more appropriate for each of those players. And interestingly, you'll hear players say, oh, I want the, uh, I want the Acuna model. Dude, you're not Acuna. You're you. Right. You need to find the bats right for you. So, yep, yep. Uh, and after talks with a number of clubs, um, everyone from, you know, their biomechanics folks to their analysts and uh, some of their PhD physicists on these teams, they're all trying to, to navigate that chasm between the qualitative and the quantitative. So I think that's the last big piece of the puzzle. They're capturing killer data with Hawkeye and they're capturing great data uh, with other biomechanics, but they're not able to yet, um, without the help of people like me and the help of some of the bad companies, they're not able to, to get those two pieces to join. You know, we talked about the being able to, to, um, to, to navigate quickly, making quick decisions. And I think one of the things after talking with obviously you and, and a number of other bat manufacturers is you're right. The chasm that they're trying to to fill or to to connect um, is going to come through the ability to provide customization directly down to those players and do it quickly, Absolutely. right? And, and when you're saying it's not an Acuna bat, it's a you know it's a Grady bat, it's an Eric bat. Um, what does yes. that mean? And to be able to go, I like this color, I like this wood type. I like this manufacturer and with the Pro XR, you know, a, the elite uh, grip, I can go to five different bat manufacturers and potentially get those bats before next week's games. That I think that you're absolutely right. It's it's being nimble, being being a, the, the ability to 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 be quick on on what they're what they're doing. And there's a lot of challenges in that in itself, right? Um, you know, you've got a lot of different people with a lot of different things, and I think that's also based. Major League Baseball's uh, concern is how do you Agreed. yeah how do you limit um, 
we can't just patent everything. We can't just let anything happen. So, so where are the limitations of, of a, you know, a legacy or traditional type bat? Right. And we talked about this at the very beginning, this in baseball's mind, this is a baseball bat. Right. Right. Yep. Interestingly, this, this baseball bat uncupped, no puck knob, pretty standard barrel profile, like an I 13, this bat for Matt Adams, that old hickory built, this is cupped. This has a specific balance point. This has a specific MOI that he wanted. This has a specific angled knob that he chose based on his performance. He did all that research himself, and I worked directly with Matt to make that happen. And the the variables that back companies have to adjust the sweet spot, to adjust the MOI, those are all the pieces of the puzzle that allow bats to be much more effectively tailored to a specific player. Yeah. And we're trying to crack that code. A lot of the bat makers have that code, but there's a piece of that m- missing in the, in the process, which is the um, biomechanic assessment of a player and how they swing the bat. Well, you know, what's funny is take that into the business. We've got the ability to do all of those things. I think it's the, the, the company or companies that are going to be able to take all the data and have a turnaround that meets the, the, the demands of the customer because the customers are demanding it, right? From a business perspective, I don't want to buy a Mike Trout bat. I want to buy a Mike Trout. I want to buy a bat that Mike Trout has, but I want it specific to me. And I want to put the order in right now and I want to have it by next week. There's yeah. a whole lot of, they're, 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 from a business perspective, the manufacturing, the the ability to for ship. I mean, there's a lot of those components in there. Of that's where the the gap needs to fill, and that's what's great about technology. We can do, we we can do direct to consumer now. I mean, we we can now have customized bats rather than signature bats. Right, a signature Mike Trap bat is different than a custom bat um, for Correct. me, in particular for me. Correct. So, Eric, you know, there's um, that idea of mass customization to players is key. However, it's still very early in the process because, yeah. again, the teams that my discussions with teams revealed that they're all like nibbling at this idea. They're following this path or one path of an, or another, but they're they're missing because they're segmented because they're one team has got this approach and this right. other team has this approach. Uh, there's all sorts of philosophies about hitting. So baseball being beholden to history and tradition is a very big battleship that you're trying to move yet at the same time the players and the coaches are demanding immediate access to the best bat tailored to my player so they can perform you couldn't have put it any better that was a perfect way to end this grady this has been a lot of fun thank you so much for joining the pitch podcast uh guys pro x r uh, doing some amazing things. I mean, I, there's not a bat manufacturer that I haven't talked to that doesn't know or isn't using uh, licensing their IP. Um, I see this as a up and coming and explosive uh, business in the world of baseball in the next three to five years. Um, it's already happening. Um, so Grady, appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Eric. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. All right, man. We all, I could have gone 45, I could.